Hello everybody, and thank you for joining me for another quick video. Uh, if you are returning to Magic the Gathering in the arena, or if you are a new player, uh, this video is going to be all about building up your collection quickly and easily. So here we go. Um, I've got a list of promo codes. There's a link to a site in the description that is called Draft Sim. Uh, it's a simulator for drafting. The website is very detailed and actually quite good, so I recommend it. And uh, also on that page is a whole list of these um, redemption codes we're going to use. We're going to apply every single one that we can to our account here today. So first we go to the store, and then from the store you go up here to this redeem code option. We're just going to alt-tab on over to the list and grab the the one that uh, looks like we can use. It's going to be play M20. We're going to go into the redemption code, and I'm just going to paste it in, play M20, just like that. Hit it. Code redeemed successfully. Three core set packs. Claim those. Coolio, that's working. Now we're going to go to the next one, play L Drain. Copying and pasting. Hey, it works. Three packs of Throne of Eldraine. There we go. And that's all new to me. I haven't opened a single pack of that set yet. Next one is Play Theros. Packs coming my way. Pretty quick. Play Ikoria is next. Three more packs for me. One more. I tried to get this one to work yesterday, but it wasn't having it. It's Play M21. I thought it was Core 21. It's Play M21. There we go. Three more packs of Core 21. There's also, it looks like, one more code we might be able to apply uh, called Level Up. Let's just see if that works. Hey. It worked, 2,000 experience. Now that pack, I don't think I can open that pack. I think that's only for the mastery set, so I might have to buy that. And there's actually a bunch of um, card style codes you can use as well. I'm only gonna apply one of these just to see if it works. It's Enlighten Me. Oh, it does work. So we get in our set, the Parter of Veils. Uh, oh, it's the Stained Glass. Oh, I'm definitely gonna apply all of those. These are beautiful. Oh yes, I do love, I do love this, so yeah, that's cool. Actually, let's, let's do another one. Oh, no, okay, these aren't all Planeswalkers on the list that we have. Um, there's like a, oh, it's a Parallax Revitalize. Okay, I mean, that's cool though, like you get a bunch of uh, card styles that you can get, um, you know, just so that way your collection isn't, so like here's just another one we'll do. Uh, this one's Foil Fungus. That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, it fails. Okay, so we can't get Foil Fungus. Um, some of them have an expiration date. Some of them don't, uh, mostly just because uh, they might have expired already or they might have uh, planned on expiring them out, but they just haven't yet, and so some of them they have, and it's just not listed. Um, so keep that in mind when you're, when you're applying some of these redemption codes. But let's go ahead and go back to our packs, and let's open them up. Let's see actually how good they are. What I'm hoping for is that they are... I did get that pack when I leveled up, so I got four instead of three. Um, that they're just like regular packs, right? So I get my wild card contributions. That's terrific. And I haven't seen hardly any of these cards, so I've got Iron Root Warlord. His power is equal to the number of creatures you control, and he creates a creature. Okay, so it's like a Selesnia, uh token maker. That's pretty cool there. Fortress Crab, pretty basic 1-6. Prismite, haven't seen those played. So you can you can tap two and add two mana of any color. It's kind of useful, I suppose, in a multicolor deck. Centaur Courser, kind of the staple in core sets at this point. Mammoth Spider, same thing. Corset staple. Actually, all of these are corset staples, aren't they? Brineborn Cutthroat. Merfolk with Flash. A Merfolk Pirate, even. That's going to make its way into a Merfolk deck. Okay, and it's a mythic. That's terrific. So obviously, there are is a possibility of getting mythics. When Omath, Omnath. Okay, that's Omnath, Locus of the Royal. Enters the battlefield. It deals damage to any target equal to the number of elementals you control. Interesting. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, put a one-one counter 
on any target elemental. And if you control eight more lands, draw a card every time you play a land. So, I don't know, that's got some interesting things about it. So, the thing about wild cards, at least for me, is that it's not the mythics and the rares so much. Rares are kind of hard to come by. It's the commons. Like, I've only got 32 common wild cards. You need so many commons in this game. It's a thing. It's a thing. Aerial Assault. Been reprinted. I like that. Reduced to Ashes. Deals 5 damage to target creature. If that creature would die exile, it's 5 for 5. That's not terrific, but I guess it's okay. Risen Reef when it... Or another elemental. So another elemental. Okay. I understand the battlefield. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it into the battlefield tapped. Okay, so there's some obvious synergy there with uh, with uh, Omnath. If you don't put the card in the battlefield, put it into your hand. So it would go into the battlefield if you had them both in play. Italian foot soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you may search Put them in your hand. So it's a, it's a soldier slash tutor for itself. Heart piercer bow. For equipped creature attacks, heart piercer bow does one damage to target creature. Defending player controls. That's kind of cool. Blood soaked altar. Pay two life, discard a card, sacrifice a creature, and create a demon token with flying. Bad. For six? That's not great. Brought back to white. Okay, that's. Put them onto the battlefield tapped. That's quite good. I just haven't seen that yet. A lot of graveyard synergy decks playing like white or uh, Orzov colors. Another elemental. Spells your opponent's cast that target this guy costs two more. Rulian Drakes. Protection from red. Sacrifice it. Counter target spell that that targets you that is that is great that is great Thought distortion can't be countered target opponent reveals their hand exile all non-creature non-land cards from that player's hand in graveyard okay and it can't be countered barony vampire that's kind of neat three casting three two I like the artwork eight target creature is plus three Two, that's a good for one that's a great like goblin trap card right there combat tricks I like that steel overseer put a plus one plus one counter on each artifact creature that has some use I like the wild card this is money right here all right throne of Eldraine these are all new to me I haven't seen a single one of these cards uh, looks like a nice uh, three casting three two knight I mean I've seen a couple as I've had to play through some of these games I like these adventure cards though, so you cast it as an adventure card and then you exile it and then you can cast the creature from exile, which is sort of fascinating. So for four, you can have a target opponent discard two cards, but then the next turn, or two turns later for seven, uh, you can cast it as a four five specter creature. And if defending player has two or fewer cards, it gains flying until end of turn, which is, which is interesting. It's just an interesting way to play. I kind of like that, how it's got two uses, and it looks like a book. It's kind of neat. Wicked Guardian. It's Yzma from the Emperor's New Groove. When Wicked Guardian enters the battlefield, we have to deal two damage to another creature you control. Okay, so it pricks another creature, and then you can draw a card. Festive Funeral. Minus X, minus X, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. I like, I like. Okay, Red Cap Raiders. Little goblin warriors, when they attack, you tap an untapped non-human creature you control, and then they get... Uh, it doesn't say any number of, but I wonder if that's how that mechanic is going to work. So if you tap... It doesn't say X, but it's probably 1. And then it becomes a 4-3 a with trample. So not bad. Trail of Crumbs, good old Hansel and Gretel reference. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token. <laughs> okay, and you gain life. When you sacrifice a food, you may pay 1, if you do. Look at the top two cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library. Ooh, that's a good uh, good cycle card. Almost like the old Vivian Reed. I like that. And then Sir Farin. The Henghammer. Or the Hengehammer, probably. 
When Sir Farron the Hengehammer attacks, another target attacking creature gets plus X plus X, where X is his power, so they get whatever he's and he's only a two casting. Two two knight, that's pretty good. Orban. Thane of Redfell. This is a good one. Yeah, so if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent, it deals that much plus two. That's really good. I lost a couple games to this guy already. Cool. You look pretty good picks so far. I can't I can't lie. Festa Funeral again. Beloved Princess, a 1-1 with lifelink. Can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. So or break it to your princess. Two would do it, although with some buffs, that might not be very that too bad. Locked Wayne Paladin with Menace. If at least three black mana was spent. Okay, so this is like mono black. Not bad. Plus one, so it's technically like a four casting four three. That's pretty good. Ginger brute. What is happening with this set? So the gingerbread man has haste, and he can't be blocked except by creatures with haste. And you can sack him to gain three life. Okay, that's neat. Raging red caps got double strike, a three casting one two, kind of expensive. Overwhelmed apprentice enters the battlefield. Each opponent mills two cards, then use cry two. I like how they're just calling it milling now. That's kind of cool. Into the story. That artwork is terrific right there. It costs three less if an opponent has seven more cards in their graveyard and you draw four cards. That's cool if you can cycle it like down to your, the bottom of your grave or the bottom of your library or something. So you don't have to hold on to a seven casting when you draw it. That's not bad. Castle Garenbrig. Tapped unless you control a forest. So it's a check land? No, it's just a forest, not a dual land. For four, add six green mana. Okay. But you can't use it to cast spells. I love the wild cards. Thank you. Those are great. Seven dwarves. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we got Hansel and Gretel, the gingerbread man, and the seven dwarves. That's that's awesome. Plus one, plus one for each other creature. <laughs> You can have up to seven cards named seven dwarves in your deck. Okay. That's going to happen. We're doing that. That's six more wild cards. I don't want to spend, though, so we're not doing that. Another Festa Funeral, so we'll have a few of those. Barrow Witches. You return target knight from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh, some knight synergy. I like it. Jousting Dummy is a Scarecrow Knight. Gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn for three. It's not horrible, although he doesn't... His utility isn't very good. It's just 2-1, so... A one power first strike kills him instantly. Target opponent reveals their hand. Non-black card is exile this way. Exile a card from your hand. Okay, so I don't like Spectre's Shriek all that much. Murderous Raider. I lost a game to Murderous Raider the other day. Which was terrific because you can you swift end. You destroy a creature or a planeswalker, you lose two life anyway, but who cares? Um and then you summon him out of exile, and then when he dies, you put it on the bottom of your library. And he's got lifelink, so you get that two life back. It's a terrific. I feel like there's a good, a good solid mono black knight deck waiting to happen here. On to Theros, Beyond Death. Another new uh, set for me. Haven't seen any of these cards except for potential reprints. Deny the divine counter target creature spell or enchantment. Exile it instead of going into the... If that's if the spell was countered this way, okay. It gets exiled instead. A two casting, one two flying. Aura spells cost one less. That's not terrible. Thirst for meaning. Draw three cards and discard two unless you discard an enchant. Discard two. Unless you discard an enchantment, then you just discard one. Okay, so they are doing foil. This looks like a foil card, right? Is that what that is? Tiny border. Nick's Born Marauder. It's just a 4-3 Minotaur for 4. Actually, that's not bad. A 4-casting 4-3 four is... That's okay. Starlet Mantle is a 2-casting Flash Enchant creature you control when it enters the battlefield. 
that creature gains hexproof until end of turn and gets plus one plus one. So flash is pretty good because it gets hexproof. So you could use that to save a creature in the event, you know, with timing. If they target him with a spell, he gets hexproof. Perhaps you can block or maybe it delays an attack. Whirlwind Denial. Each spell and ability your opponent control. For your opponent's control. Counter it unless its controller pays four. They have to be on the stack, I wonder? I wonder. Banishing Light. Three casting. When Banishing Light enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent. Until it leaves the battlefield. Okay, so it's another... Uh, these used to be creatures a few sets ago. Nessian Boar. All creatures able to block him do so. When it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. I mean... It's a five casting 10-6. Okay, attack with him and anything else. Everything else gets through. I like that idea. Oh, they brought back the sagas. Yes. I love these. Okay, so you search your library for a basic planes card, put it in your hand, shuffle your library, create a wall, a zero four, and then you gain two life. I love the sagas. They were so good. Indiary Oracle. If a creature dealt damage by Incendi Oracle would die, exile instead. I like that. That's great. Tide Turtles got Flash and Defender for two. I don't, I don't love that. Another Transcendent Envoy. That's This is a decent flyer. Merfolk Wizards here. Powering Wave Mystic. It deals damage to Mills that many cards. And then Unknown Shores... Okay, so you tap it to add a colorless, or you pay one and add any one man of any color. And a foil, hateful Eidolon. So one casting, one two with lifelink. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you controlled that was attached to it. Again, that's not bad. That's not bad. Perforos, bronze blood, the bronze blooded. Okay. Uh, okay, indestructible. Another mythics. That's two. As long as your devotion to red is less than five, Perforos isn't a creature. Other creatures you control have haste. You may put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So... Haste. A creature with haste. Can... Does he have haste? Other creatures you control. That's where it's coming from. Other creatures you control have haste. So you drop them. And they all attack. It's almost like sneak attack. Cool. Love that. Actually, I like that a lot. So that's two mythics. Pretty good so far. All new cards. All new to me. Underworld Dreams. I want to say that's a reprint. Dealt with this one before. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they take one damage, essentially. Sleep of the Dead. Tap target creature. It doesn't untap. Escape for three. Exile three cards from your graveyard. Son of the Escape. You may yeah, you cast it from your graveyard for its escape cost. Kind of neat. Rage Scarred Berserker. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus one plus oh. And Indestructible. I like that. Although that's five. That's not so bad. Thaumaturge is familiar. It's a flying. Scry one. Fire's Grasp, target creature gets my Memory Drain, a forecasting counterspell. Not sure that's going to make it, but that's kind of cool artwork. I like that a lot. That's super good. I've always liked the artwork in this game. Always. Devour of Memory. Never one or more cards are put into your graveyard from your library. Plus one, plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked. And you can pay three to mill a card. If you have any graveyard synergy, that might be kind of good. Foil rare. It's black foil rare, so I guess we're making a black deck here. Ephemia the Cacophony. Flying. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Julio. On to Ikoria. 
Evolving Wilds. Okay, Evolving Wilds came back. That's cool. Gust of Wind. It costs two if you control... It costs two less if you control creatures with flying. Okay. And then you bounce uh, non-land permanent. That you don't control. Specifically that you don't control. Okay, so you can't do one of your own. Bar Finder. The fox creature with vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Cavern Whisperer. Five casting 4 4 with Menace. And Mutate. You cast this spell for its mutate cost. That's right, you cast it from your hand. It's not an activated ability. They mutate onto a creature on top, plus all of the abilities under it. So it's like they combine with whatever. That's weird to me. It's weird to come back to that mechanic. I don't understand it fully. Rumbling Rock Slide deals damage to target creature the number of lands you control. Or back for more, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, and then it fights a creature. Yeah, that's that's great. And Dotha Crystal. Add a black, white, or green mana, or cycle it for two. That's not terrible. And we got Lutri the Spell Chaser. Legendary creature, another elemental. Yeah, <laughs> elemental otter? How <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, it's got flash, companion. Each non land card in your starting deck has a different name. If your starting deck meets the companion's restriction, you may choose to have your. to, to be your companion. Once per game, you can pay three. Anytime you cast a sorcery, put your chosen companion into your hand. Okay. When this dude enters the battlefield, Lutri the Spell Chaser, huh? Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets. So that's for three. And the companion, each non land card has a different name. So it's like a brawl, uh, like a brawl companion. Okay. Or the old brawl rules. I don't know if those have changed either. Another wild card. That's great. Dead weight. It's been reprinted, so I probably have four of those from various sets. Plummet. Okay, Plummet's back. I like that. Flycatcher Giraffid. There's the battlefield. Enters the battlefield with your choice of Vigilance or Reach. Migratory Great Horn. Another Mutator. When it, it mutates... Okay, so it might be worth paying the Mutate cost then instead of... Instead of having a 3-4, you put a basic land out. That's kind of tapped. From your from your library. Right? So not from your hand. Reconnaissance mission. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage. Draw a card. That's nice. Storm Wild Caprador. If non-combat damage would be dealt to him, prevent that damage. Put a 1-1 counter on him. For each one damage prevented this way, that's amazing. Lurus of the Dream Den. Creature Cat Nightmare. And a companion. So each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. Okay. During each turn, you can cast one permanent spell with mana cost two or less from your graveyard. Huh, that's interesting. By interesting, I mean I love that idea. We're gonna have to make that happen. Capture Sphere, it's tapped and doesn't untap. Pyroceratops is a 2 3 with trample whenever you cast it on a creature spell. Well, that's a good burn card. Blister Spit Gremlin, huh? Deals one damage to each opponent whenever you cast it on a creature spell. Untap Blister Spit Gremlin. Meter Sergeant, when Permitter Sergeant attacks. Other humans get plus one books. So it's a human deck. It's too expensive, though, for the uh, for the Midnight Cat creature we just saw. Excavation Mole, three casting, three, three, a trample. When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Interesting, I don't love the mills. Don't. Auspicious Starix. It's an elk beast. 
Whenever it mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. Put those permanent cards on the back. Wild card and a gem razor. The 4-4, four, four. he's got reach, he's got trample, and he mutates. When he mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent control. On to this most recent core set we're dealing with right now. I've got a few of these cards. Okay, I've got none of these. Ormand? I had some of those. When Gormand enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature, but it's a 6-casting 5-5 five, five with flying. Yeah, it's not bad. 6-casting 5-5 five, five flying trample. It's not bad. Legion's Judgment is a quick destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. Warded Battlements is a defender. Attacking creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0. Oh. Good old Duress. Target opponent reveals their hand. You can choose a non-creature, non-land card, and that player discards that card. Scorching Dragonfire deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker. If they would die, they exile instead. That's nice. Sanguine Indulgence. Good old Party of the Vampires. Costs 3 less if you've gained 3 life, so that's a 1 casting sorcery to return 2 target creature cards from the graveyard to your hand. It's not bad if you gain the life. Battle Rattle Shaman is a Goblin Shaman for 4. It's a 4 casting 2-2. Two, two. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, you may have target creature get plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. So it just happens whether or not he attacks. That's not bad. Primal Might, again, good old plus X plus X, and then it fights up to one creature you don't control. Indulging Patrician. Flying lifelink at the beginning of your end step. If you gain three or more life, each opponent loses three life. Two casting scry three, then reveal the top card. If it's a creature or a land card, draw a card. Well, obviously, if you want to do that so you could draw that card. Library Larcenist, whenever library is sex. Draw a card, lots of card draw. Opt. The Teferi Opt, we like that one. Cordia Pegasus, it's a reprint. Thrashing Bronte, got reprinted. Good for him, he deserves it. Recasting 3-4, and you sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Don't forget artifact creatures count as artifacts, and you can destroy them too. Oh, I forgot to hit my rare. Miss click. I think that was a reprinted card. I think that was a familiar looking artwork on it too. Faith's Fetters. There's the battlefield to gain four life. And then it's a pacifism. Activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Great. Ogre. It's got reach when he enters the battlefield. If you control another creature with power four or greater, he deals two damage to each opponent. That's kind of useful. Will of Possibility as an additional cost to this spell. Discard a card and then draw two cards. Read the tides, draw three cards, or return two creatures to their owner's hands. Not bad. Deathbloom Thalid got reprinted from Dominaria. When it dies, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. Cultivate, search your library for two basic land cards, reveal them, put them on the battlefield tapped. Put one on the battlefield tapped and the other in your hand, then shuffle your library. That's a reprint. Ghostly Pilferer. When he becomes untapped, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. That's useful for what's happening right now with all these casts out of exile and all that business going on. Discard a card and he can't be blocked. It's got some use. It's got some use. Goblin Wizardry. Gate to... One ones with prowess. Okay. Short sword. Ah, uh, another reprint. Yep, just a plus one, plus one artifact. Leafkin Avenger. That looks new to me. One green mana for each creature with power four or greater. And for eight mana, he deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. Wow. Sage is five casting with reach as long as you've 
drawn two or more cards. Gnarled Sage gets plus O plus two and has Vigilance. Colossal Dreadmaw is a six casting, six six with Trample, solid green. Um, that's a reprint from, from prior year. Lanawar Visionary enters the battlefield, draw a card, and taps to add one green mana. That's amazing. Havoc Jester is a creature devil. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, Havoc Jester deals one damage to any target. It's a five casting, five five. That's pretty good. A rare wild card. I love wild cards. And that is how you want to build your collection quickly. So we started with a few wild cards, got a few more. I've got 18 rare and 8 mythic rare. So if I wanted to boost up my collection by a little bit more, I could do so by spending some money on on those, or not some money, but spending those wild cards on, on a deck build. So that's what I would do. Again, link's in the description, so you can click on that link and just copy and paste those uh, codes on over. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. Have a good day.